They really, really like Nigerians, aside from the perception that Nollywood has brought upon us as Nigerians in West Africa. Yeah, there's a general perception of um, Nigerians that well, well, the they do rituals. <laughs> and, um, like I, one of the culture shocks I found here was like people in very nice SUVs, big cars, and the person will be sweating inside traffic. I'm like, why can't you put on the AC? So, hi. Um, today's video is going to be on life in Ghana, and I recently had experience with house hunting in Ghana again, and it just reminded me of some of the things I had previously forgotten or I chose to forget. And also, I've been receiving DMs from my friends uh, that want to jackpa outside of Nigeria and are looking to see how life in Ghana is. So this is a video to answer those questions. <laughs> I wrote a notebook. I wrote down some things because like, if I say, let me be reading of the top of my head. I might forget something, so yeah, I might be looking down it's because to remember my points. So first of all, we start with residency. If, as an ECOWAS citizen, you're entitled to 90 days stay in Ghana visa-free. So after the 90 days, you either go back and come back again, that's go back to Nigeria and come back to Ghana to renew and get another 90 days. Or you get a residence permit that will allow you to stay for up to a year. You can be for more than a year at a time. But one year's worth of residence permit would cost you, as an ECOWAS citizen, um, $647. This is renewal. This amount I'm calling for renewal, not the first time. So you pay $647 for the residence permit. You do a health check that costs about $150 and then you get a non-citizen Ghana card that's like $160 so the total of everything will be about $1,000 and this money, this amount can actually vary depending on the agent you use as if you use somebody or you went yourself or you, like how you got it, the agent you used and how quickly you want it so yeah, this amount it can be more than $1,000 depending that's for work permits to work for a company and um, in Ghana for one year as an Ogoa citizen. And another thing is that if you give birth to Ghana, I had my babies in Ghana here. Ghana does not give um, citizenship by birth. They are not going to be um, Ghanaians. You don't have any rights as a citizen for being born here. Um, in fact, those children will actually need a residence permit to live in Ghana. As an equal citizen. Um, what else? Yeah, you've probably heard about our light situation. Um, we came to Ghana because of the light. We came to Ghana because of the light and the relative peace. But right now, there's something called called doom so. It's where they take the light and you're not sure of when they bring it back. And sometimes things in the freezer will defrost. Like last month. I, a lot of things spoiled in my fridge because the doom so was very bad. Like they used to take the light for 12 hours at a stretch. It was never the case previously. Like before, when we came to Ghana in 2021, they used to take the light like highest starting means one. One hour is that that's taking long. And sometimes, sometimes they actually give a notice ahead of time before they take the light so you are prepared. Not like you have to do anything because you know the light will come back, sure. So people don't really have gen, except besides those that are doing business that cannot afford to have any lights out. But I heard that this has happened before, so some people actually had gen from that period. Um, it has eased up a bit now, although it's still happening like this. Sometimes you take the lights in the day around 12, and then the next time you see it will be at 6 p.m. So yeah, it's still happening, but... Um, and we've had to adjust, like personally, I've had to buy rechargeable fans. I yeah, have one solar and um, one that needs air. That's how we've been adjusting. Some people have had to buy solar, inverter, and all that. Well, the one that will be difficult to do is to buy generator. Ah, 
because have you seen the cost of fuel? The cost of fuel is like 15, it fluctuates actually. Sometimes it's 14 cities, sometimes it's 15, but like averagely it's been around 15 cities. And when you hear 15 cities, you think uh, it's small change. 15 cities, no be small change, you like the hack for changing from cities to Naira for you to understand any amount they are calling in cities is to add two zeros at the back because basically that's what they did to their money. They moved two zeros at the back. So when you hear 15 cities, it's like 1,500 per liter of fuel. I don't think I've, I'm well due up to that amount. Yeah. Like how many liters do I need to keep my fridge running? Maybe one AC or just one? It's not feasible. And then you have to repair the gel. And there are not a lot of, based on demand, and I don't think that there will be a lot of generic mechanics. So yeah, um, getting a gen is out of the question, unless you are extremely rich and you have the money to spend. Sure. Yeah, that's it on the light, but we have Ghana water. So um, Ghana water is the government water it runs, and you pay, there's a meter you pay monthly, just like light bill. You pay monthly for water bill and water is clean like that is something that i never experienced as a nigerian living in nigeria yeah and then the i, I mentioned earlier that there is this relative peace and quiet which is also one of the reasons why we educated here it's there's just this sense of peace um when you meet police at the checkpoint even if it's at night you don't feel scared you don't feel like oh these people are going to harass me or anything like that no i actually feel safer when i see police people on the road not like there's any reason to not feel safe unlike in nigeria actually based on my first-hand experiences with nigerian police and my see police i have ptsd like i start hyperventilating because of all the horrible experiences not once not twice yeah Aside from that, also, um, there's this general, like I said, there's this general sense of peace and safety that some houses actually have their boat, like the boat to their door in front, the boat to their gates. If you want to enter the compound, you can open the gate from outside. And most of them literally don't have security guys. Some of the fences are really low, like it's just fence for fence sake, I guess, for privacy, not really for security. So yeah, you don't really hear much about um, stealing and all that. In spite of the high cost of living here, like Ghana is two to three times more expensive than in Nigeria. Any item you buy, 1,500 Naira in Nigeria, you need, you literally need like 3,000 or 4,000 to buy it in Ghana. It's that expensive, yet um, the rate crime is really low here. So I give it to them. And then, as a Nigerian and possibly a Lagosian, if if you if you've lived in Enugu or Abuja, this might not really be an issue for you. But like there's this slow pace to life here. Like everything's like don't rush me. Like if you're in a hurry, like you're disturbing people. So yeah, your patience will be tested. You just have to learn patience on a general scale. If you know, if not, you'll be so frustrated you really be frustrated so yeah my patience level has gotten higher as moved here so um and if you think that house hunting is difficult in nigeria try house hunting in ghana it's not something i would like to experience again till i have reason to leave as a Nigerian, the options that are available, that's the options of houses that are available to rent for you are very limited because most landlords don't want Nigerians in their house based on previous experiences with Nigerian tenants and the general perception of Nigerians here. So the, the houses that you have, you will find a house, you like the house, and the landlord is like, I don't want to address my house. Then the ones that are like, oh god, <sighs> yeah, yeah, I, I, I don't want anything that will make me want to house for the game. It's, it's just difficult. It's you will see Shege Banza, it's not something I want to experience. 
but you you will find you will find with time so aside from that um if per adventure somehow you carry your car you couldn't sell it in nigeria and you want to bring your car to nigeria uh, to ghana here by road you bring the car in a fully imported car you've paid all your duties the car is sound you even paid a car to the import duty when you're importing the car and you bring it to ghana and you want to stay more than the 30 days like there's a 30 90 day permit that's three months permit that you pay for but if you want to stay for long it's not economically feasible to be paying everything months for that stuff so you have to import the car again all over again if, including paying the ECOWAS be inside the import duty and the amount the car will be valued at is it, not what you bought it in Nigeria it's not what you bought it from wherever you bought it from in Nigeria no it will be valued at the amount that is currently at in the country where the car was manufactured yes they, they have a system you know how much each car costs that's what you pay that's the percentage where they'll be getting your import duty from and what betide you that your car is 10 years older? Like, your car was made in 2013 and this is 2024. It's 10 years old. You have to pay a fee for having a car that is over 10 years old. So yeah, there's that part. You have to have it at the back of your mind. And um, when they meet a Nigerian, like, hey, your name is Chika, wow, are you Nigerian? Yes, I'm in Nigeria. My name is obviously Nigerian. I'm Abel. Yes, they will be like, oh, I have a Nigerian friend. They're very, very proud of their Nigerian friends. Those that met Nigerians and intermingled with them, they really, really like Nigerians. Aside from the perception that knowledge has brought upon us as Nigerians in West Africa, yeah, there's a general perception of um, Nigerians that well, well, the they do rituals. Yeah, aside from that, those have actually met Nigerians. They love, love Nigerians and they're proud to say that they have Nigerian friends, which is a plus. It's nice to have your fellow countryman. We are, we are literally the same in this Africa. It's just, I don't want to talk about equal words because anytime I think of it, it makes me angry to think that within West Africa, we can't even have quarter of the privileges that the whole of Europe has as a continent, we don't have that. And then outside of West Africa, East Africans need visas to visit another country inside Africa. Your own black fellow black man, the man, the blue man. I don't want to talk about it. And um, yeah, the, the fiber internet is really, really fast here. I can't say the same for mobile internet. Like, mobile internet is horrible. I haven't been able to upload any videos in a month now because our fiber internet had to be reinstalled. And um, yeah, we've not been able to come in a month. But the fiber internet is very, very fast. It's, it can get up to one gigabyte per second. Yeah, it's that fast. I've, I don't think I've ever experienced anything like that in Nigeria. And any any of our Nigerian friends come over and I like we tell them and they, they like go on fast bus come and see this. They're like, wow, yeah. We have internet going for us here. Delight. <laughs> so yeah, that's that's a slice of heaven here. And then then there's a tax part that you have to be aware of. Um we pay COVID, we still pay COVID levy and tourism levy on items that you buy, especially when it is fast food. Um, COVID was in 2019. I don't know why we're still paying a COVID levy. And the tourism levy, I don't even know why there's a tourism levy, especially when you buy fast food. Is it that tourists are not supposed to eat or when Ghanaians eat, they remove the tourism levy? I, I just, these levies are aside from that. When services and people from outside bring their items here and you compare to the price that is sold in Nigeria, you might want to start understanding why their own is more expensive in Ghana here than buying it in Nigeria because of all these levies and taxes and they don't pay their tax. So services like Spotify, DSTV, when it was getting started on Netflix, like the amount you know if you compare, it's sometimes two times or three times more than what you would be in Nigeria. So the Nigerians are enjoying that. I give that to them. And then, 
and apparently, like I, the, one of the culture shocks I found here was like people in very nice SUVs, big cars, and the person will be sweating inside traffic. I'm like, why can't you put on the AC? So this thing that AC the chop fuel, I don't know if it's true. I'm sure it takes fuel, but it, it can't be that much. I mean, fuel is expensive here. It's understandably expensive, but ah, people they sweat inside. Okay, now you even go book um, an Uber or a boat. And even in both sides, there is the option of comfort in the app, which is more expensive than the regular ride. And sometimes you book the ride, and the, the, what that, the comfort just means is that you're entitled to AC. When you enter the car, sometimes you have to remind the driver that, oh, God, I paid for comfort, please put on the AC for me. Sometimes they will do that. Sometimes they will tell you that uh, the regular answer is that their are AC spots. You cannot beat them. Tell them, hey, you put this is always spot. Like, why don't you repair? It? I've been, I've been trying to repair. It. There's always a story. So if the person does not have a story, and then like, oh, my AC is okay. I just um, think it's with it's well uh -huh. to chop well. They will now start asking for an extra fee to put on the AC for you. So yeah, this is one thing that I never experienced in Lagos. Like, I booked an Uber so that I won't sweat. As I'm going to where I'm going. Like if I enter bus, I'm sweating. If I enter Uber, I'm sweating. What's the point? Do you get a hair? So yeah, um, another one is the food. The food. Um, you know how our soups are very thick. This I I like suffered from this food part when I was pregnant. Um, uh, soups are very thick, but jazz is very watery. And I think what they call soup is like what we call stew, and what they call stew is what we call soup. So, yeah, the foods are very watery. The soups are very watery in consistency, but like you'll find that you like some of them. Some of them, like the granite soup, uh, the chicken stew. The chicken stew, I ate it with blood then when I was in the hospital, and I really, really loved it. It was a nice delicacy. And um, the. Uh, What's the name of there's this food um like swallow that they have that's like um it's like fufu it smells like fufu except it's made with cassava except the only like it smells like fermented stuff but it's it just uh, yeah it's not smooth like fufu that's the only difference you might like it and um the rice yeah the rice is scented I've actually been buying Nigerian rice here, which is more expensive to buy here because, like, you're buying from a Nigerian food stop shop and they're importing, so like the price will be like three times or even two times or 1.4 times, 1.5 times more expensive here. Or, like, I'm still buying Nigerian rice here because the rice here is scented and I'm not really used to scented food, although there are some, like, very few that are not scented. By scent, I mean this um, jasmine rice. And the rice does not cook for long. There's a technique to cooking each other, you get the hang of it. The instructions are usually written on the back, but like it's just it's just an acquired taste, you have to acquire it. Aside from that, yeah, Ghana is um, a really chill place to live in, irrespective of the challenges, um, the light issue. At least you are you're always assured that you have light share within 24 hours. That is bad. <laughs> internet is good and like yeah it's it's a cool place to live in actually i know it's the cost of living <laughs> hi so i just got back from church and i wanted to ask that i've been a wall for over a month now because of the internet um <laughs> We had an issue with our fiber network and it took a very long time. They, they only came like two days ago to install the fiber. So I've not been able to upload any videos in that time. And um, the alert has been going on. So I haven't actually shot a lot of videos, but like I have a lot of scripts. So um, hopefully this will be a one time thing. And I won't be going off um, for a long time like this again without, you know. Yeah. Um, if you've watched to this end, thank you for always sticking around. Um, I really appreciate your support. And I hope to see you in my next.